Blog Talk Radio. I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. The accident was over a year ago. A second woman has been elected president. The twelfth planet has been named in the solar system. The last wild polar bear has died. I slept through it all. Was here for my waking. He called it a beginning. He said it was good. I think he may have thought that anything I did was good. Welcome to Transition Radio, live from Hollywood, Florida, with your host and hostess, Mark Angelo and Jessica Lynn Cummings. Back in 2003, and I would definitely would have 
benefit from a place like yours. And I think you're doing a great service to the trans community. So we Thank you. We really enjoy it. It, uh, it has given us the opportunity to meet some very wonderful people. I'm sure it's very rewarding to, uh, especially the young transgender men who, who come from out of state or even out of the country and feel that they can find a safe place to go and they're going to be taken care of by wonderful hands of yourself and your wife and you are a nurse, which is an amazing thing because you know what you're doing. So it's it's a great, great idea that both you and your wife have. Absolutely. So, Leland, tell us how New Beginning Retreat got started. Well, it was kind of like the intro. Um, I had been looking for a long time. I've been really unhappy uh, having breasts since I was the age of 12. Uh, I got, uh, for my 12th birthday, I started my cycle, got glasses and breasts. So it was kind of a downer birthday. And um, I always had imagined myself with a nice flat chest, but... You know, I'm 54 years of age, so I grew up in a little bit of a different generation, and we just really didn't talk about it. You were pretty much put into the category of being a dyke or a lesbian, or, you know, you just didn't go around telling people that you really felt like inside you were a little boy, but that you just didn't uh, match, your insides didn't match your outsides. So uh, I, I looked for several years. I was in the nursing field, and it was always about breast reductions. And it wasn't until uh, about 10 years ago, 8 or 10 years ago, I actually, I, I really didn't know that you could uh, have top surgery and have a chest that looked like a, a man, uh, a man's chest. So someone uh, told me about it, and then I was kind of nervous about getting it done at my age, and, you know, I kind of just, and, and there was financial uh, obstacles. But I finally found, just a couple of years ago, um, a friend of mine said something to me about Dr. Garamoni, and I knew that that was the way I wanted to go, so I went and had a consultation with him, and, um, you know, he showed me exactly, I mean, it was just like it was going to be so simple. It seemed, you know, the way he explained it was like, wow, this is exactly what I want. So I made the date for my surgery, and it was like the introduction said, we were in the waiting room listening to people from Italy. They They couldn't even really speak English, but from what we could gather, they were having trouble with cabs and hotels and just the language barrier itself. And the day I was having surgery, there was like somebody from Alaska, and then there was three other countries. And we thought, you know, it must be terrible to try to navigate all this stuff. And so I'm a little entrepreneurial in some ways. I mean, I always like to think about new business ventures. So while I was recovering my seven days post-op, I was thinking, geez, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm looking for something to retire into, too, a business that I would really love without re actually being back in the nursing field. So we started shopping around, put a business plan together, and found what we thought was the ideal place, and it just all fell together. It's like I think when things are meant to be, it just they just come along, and, and that's what happens. So we opened New Beginnings, and we love it. It's, it's great. That's awesome. And let me ask you, since you were talking about top surgery and you having your own, what did it feel like when, when you finally achieved it and that happened? Um, I just felt like me. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a little different than some of the guys. A lot of them are on testosterone and some different things. And I did try Androgel a little bit after I had my surgery. But uh, for me, I'm already post-menopausal. So it had some different effects that I wasn't happy with. And I didn't want to lose my hair because I earned every gray hair on my head. So I didn't want to lose my hair. And um, it just didn't do anything for me. So I, I stopped taking it. But I remember the day that I had the surgery, they – you know, they drove me home. I was still really groggy, but we had a big mirror on the living room wall, and I stood in front of that mirror holding my little It's a Boy balloon because they had bought me a little balloon that said It's a Boy, and I was uh -huh. still pretty groggy and everything. But I walked up to the mirror, and I just thought, oh, my God, for the first time in my life, I actually look what I feel like I'm supposed to look like. I used to always get dressed, and and it would be like I would see my face, and I was okay, but then... I would look at my chest and I would think it was just so, you know, didn't fit. And for the very first time, even with all the bandages on, I thought, oh, my God, I finally, I finally fit. 
Yes, I know that feeling. <laughs> so let me ask you, what do you offer that no other place does, and how has perception from trans men you see for facility Well, we offer a safe, friendly environment. Uh, I think that that's very important. And we also offer the opportunity to go through your uh, surgical recovery with others sharing the same experience. I have found that while you can recover in a hotel room, you're going to be fine. Guys do it all the time. But it's not the same experience. Uh, You're not confined to a hotel room. We have a beautiful pool area here. We have a media center. But what I find is the most valuable thing is that the guys – share their experience. We've, we've had a lot of guys who come, never seen a trans guy other than themselves. Uh, we've had patients come, their families have disowned them. They don't want anything to do with them. We, ha, we, you know, we give guys the opportunity to come by themselves. We had a guy come from Germany. He was at the surgical center. He didn't know he couldn't come by himself. He was there to have his surgery that day, and the surgical center said, you can't have it. You don't have anyone to drive you home. They called us and they said, would you take this kid in? I said, sure. We went down and picked him up. We moved his things from the hotel to here. Um, I do have 25 years of nursing experience. And while I'm not really um, doing this job in the capacity of a nurse, I'm not, you know, I'm not um, actually doing nursing skills here. I think that parents that are sending their kids from, especially from overseas and, and even within the U.S., they feel much more comfortable knowing that there's a competent uh, medical, someone with medical experience, um, you know, to be there with them. And I think the last thing is, is that we can give you a lot of little tips for your recovery process that you wouldn't normally or typically think of if you were staying in a hotel. And we also have all of the little simple things like you don't realize all the things you need when you're in a hotel that you have to run out to the store for. But our house is already completely staffed with all that, uh, stocked with all that. So um, it's much, much more convenient. That's definitely an excellent idea. And, and, and like I said, back in 2003, we didn't even have a doctor in South Florida that performed the surgery. I went to the Cleveland Clinic and went to a cosmetic surgeon, Dr. Boyd, that uh, he's the one that did the surgery. I was his first. So right, it's great right. nice that Dr. Caramoni is doing that now and that you guys are providing the service, which makes it a lot of a heck of a lot. Absolutely. Which brings me to my question. What are the most memorable stories, without getting into confidentiality issues, that you can share? Uh, no names, of course, just the story. Sure. Um, the very first thing that pops to my mind was a young gentleman from Italy. He came here. He kind of did like a little bit of a, a can I say a swear word on here? Kind of did kind of a mind yeah, well, alteration yeah, well, for me um, because he came here and he was just all man. I mean, from head to foot, just covered in black hair. You know, he just looked, and no one had ever seen him without a shirt ever. Uh, not his family, you know, it had, it had altered his life so much. I mean, he couldn't date properly or anything like that. And in Italy, it was very difficult for him. And he came here, and um, he allowed me to pre surgery see him. But when he took his shirt off, it was, it actually kind of, blew me away because here was this guy in this uh, sports bra, but it it just, I don't know, I just wasn't prepared for it. Even me, and I'm very liberal and have seen more things, you know, I always say if you have something I haven't seen, you should be in the Guinness Book of World Records, but, um, you know, it just totally threw me off, and he was so introverted when he came here, and after his surgery, he just blossomed into the most amazing extroverted guy he was walking around the whole post-op post-surgery he was walking around showing everybody his chest beaming from ear to ear and he just always sticks in my mind he stays in touch with me all the time from italy and writes me on facebook and tells me how much uh he appreciates new beginnings and when his aunt was here his aunt was here with him uh the people across the street had a big party and in she walked outside to smoke a cigarette, and there was a big three-foot wine bottle, and she thought it was a Molotov cocktail bomb, and she came running into the place screaming, La Bamba, La Bamba. And I was thinking, oh, my God, the cultural differences are so, you know, we get the opportunity to meet people that have such things that you wouldn't even think about, you know. And she actually literally thought the neighbors were setting off a bomb over there, which kind of petrified her. But... um 
that was uh, some of the people. We have uh, a lot of people from Portland. They made a. They actually made a video. If you go to our website, newbeginningsretreat.com, they actually were having a contest. So the two two guys from there made a video that's really outstanding because we're giving away seven free nights at New Beginnings for the best uh, video that people turn in. So that was pretty interesting. Um, like I said, we had the guy from Germany who wasn't able to have his surgery. We've had. Um, we had, we rescued two people out of a hotel down in Fort Lauderdale that were miserable. Um, the kid from Pennsylvania that had never seen another trans guy, and he came here, and he was just amazed. He was like a kid in a candy store asking everybody all the questions. He was also the kid that the duck chased. Every time this guy walked outside of our house, we have a, a duck outside. I don't know why he was attracted to this young guy, but he would chase him all around the property. He couldn't step foot outside the door, not in a negative way. I think he was very attracted to him, actually. So um, we've just had uh, Christmas was great here. We had uh, patients here at Christmas. We had a huge Christmas tree and a big Christmas dinner. We cooked Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, A lot of kids don't have family to spend holidays with, and I find that extremely sad, but... And I I think for my last story, one of the things that touched my heart the most was I had a young gentleman from Iowa, which is where I'm from, and when he came here, we really hit it off, and he got in touch with me not long ago. He's engaged to his uh, fiance. He's engaged now, and he asked me if I would come to the wedding, and I said, what do you you need? Because his father will have nothing to do with him, and I said, uh, what do you need, a best man? And he said, no, I need a dad. Um, so, very touching stories. And that's got to feel really good. And, and yeah, like it does. Really something that's really important. Tell us a little bit about you. How was your transition? Been? Well, I, I'm not sure. You know, I got, I, I got a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I got some flack from the, uh, trans community. When I used, I did a, a podcast for a radio station up in Ohio, and I talked about my pre-surgery and then post-surgery, and I talked about my transition. And some of the trans guys have said, "You're not transitioning locally, uh, more locally here in Florida, because they've known me." And they're like, "You're not transitioning. You're misusing the words. It's because you refuse to." Like, I haven't changed my name legally or my gender legally because I don't know about you, but if, you know, 54 years of paper trail, you know, it's a lot. And I'm I'm comfortable. I'm I'm okay. I mean, I I took Leland as my father's middle name. And I prefer male pronouns, but I'm not sure that I have to make the entire transition. I, I don't know. You know, I'm more comfortable with he... But I guess because I really have never been challenged. You don't um, have to explain yourself and no yeah. one. I mean, I don't believe anyone has the right to say who's trans and who's not trans. Yeah. We all have different journeys, and being transgender is a big umbrella, and we all fit in that umbrella. And I'm sitting tired of hearing people judge other people, especially we're supposed to be a community. We're supposed to support each other and not bully each other. Exactly. And, and just because I'm keeping, you know, I'm keeping Partially, what I have downstairs doesn't beat me any less of a woman. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, right. I, mean, I don't see how people can pass that judgment, which kind of makes me want to barf in a sense. Yeah. You know? Well, people they really just... were hard. Some couple people were really hard on me. But the truth is, you know, I'm not sure. I've been doing this a lot longer than most of them. You know, even though I'm not, you know, I don't have to be all beefed up on, on anything or, or work out all the time. I mean, I'm just a... You know, I've just always been me, and I've never had any trouble until I had my breasts removed. Oddly enough, I thought that would be the easiest time in my life. It kind of became the most difficult. Um, that's crazy. Well, let's get – you have a uh, partner in crime who is there in the trenches with you. Tell us about your lovely wife and her role in the business. Yes, my wife runs – uh, all the computer, I always say I'm just the pretty face because <laughs> she does everything. She books all the appointments. She talks with all the guys. 
She also helps make surgical runs on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, I do most of the preoperative runs, but uh, she does the actual surgical runs, spends a lot of time with the guys, loves to shop in the malls while they're having surgery. So I think that's why she picked those times and let me have the other ones. But, um, yeah, she's, she's a shopper, okay? Shoes, you know? Oh, my gosh. And, you know, his office isn't far from the Sawgrass Mills Mall, so you can, you know, it's where she spends a lot of her time. But, I cannot um, wait to meet her. We are going to huh? be great. I cannot wait to meet her. We are going to be great friends. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. She's a, she's a shopper, boy. She loves to do that. And, uh, you know, we kind of split the rest of the time, but um, she also holds down a full-time job still. So do I. And so it's, uh, it, you know, it's it's busy. It's a busy life. I hear you. I mean, I have a, I work as an occupational therapist. I do eight-hour days, and it's, it's hard. I and mean, having to do the show, the uh, TV and radio show, it's, it's not easy. And we do it because we love it, and I feel that mm-hmm. we're providing a major service for the community to listen to all the voices in the trans community. And yeah. All the similar and all the unique stories yes. that are out there. So what advice does a nurse can you provide post-op trans men? Well, I think not only just post-op trans men, but preoperatively. I think if you are eating right, if you are not smoking, would be a you know a, some good advice. Um, take care of yourself. You know, just take care of yourself preoperatively. And postoperatively, really, the only advice I will tell you is because Dr. Garamoni has it down to a science, as I'm sure other doctors who perform this procedure uh, are also, um, is just follow your doctor's instructions. Don't stress about it. Just follow your instructions and, um, you know, eat right and take care of yourself. And actually the surgery, it isn't, it isn't uh, bad to recover from. I mean, I didn't even take a pain pill. So maybe just because I'm a tough old bird, you know. But I, I didn't have trouble with it at all. So I have just, to concur on that. I didn't have. Huh? I mean, I had his direct. I said I have to concur on that. I think the, the top surgery isn't that bad at all. I had both top and bottom at the same time. Hysterectomy. The hysterectomy killed me. But I the oh, top yeah. surgery isn't bad at all. Absolutely. So, you know, and I would just tell guys just enjoy your new beginning. You know, just just start and, uh, you know. Relax and uh, follow doctor's orders. And it's an amazing name, New Beginning, because that's what it is. You know, it's like you've been giving a new chance in life, a new beginning. So that's a wonderful name you chose for the business, by the way. Very good name. That's the hardest part of a business. Oftentimes, the hardest part of a business is finding a name that fits you. Absolutely. I can yep. definitely concur with that one. Speaking of the name, um, what are your plans for the future with New Beginnings Retreat? Well, we're just going to keep on uh, problem solving, trying to uh, take people's suggestions and work with them, tweak the business until we get it exactly like we want it. Uh, we're going to continue to provide a safe, stress-free recovery environment, and we're going to just strive to improve as time goes by. I uh, I listen to what people say. Um, I want people to be comfortable and to be happy. Uh, if you're looking for a five-star hotel, this is not your place. And, uh, you know, we can't stress that enough. It is a beautiful place, but it's not room service every day. We're not up there making up your beds every day. Uh, however, I'd be glad to make up your bed for you or change your sheets for you or assist you with anything that we can. But, um, you know, people come here, they still make their meals. We have a beautiful kitchen. Uh, We help the guys that are here by themselves. But if you have a companion, you know, you do your own dishes or your companion does your dishes. It's more like a bed and breakfast communal living than it is a five-star hotel. And we're just going to keep listening and keep trying to improve things as we go along. Well, that's actually a good a good. um a good platform as well because, you know, me, I just had my partial lower surgery on Friday and, you know, I still, even the day after, to be getting up and being mobile is the best thing you can do afterwards. And, you know, you know, if you lay around and talk, we all know that it's all it's going to do is make it worse. So 
it helps sure. you speed up the um, recovery process by cleaning up and doing GMO bonds. Well, sure, and like I said, we're not here to give actual medical advice. When someone has something that needs to be addressed medically, I still have them, even if I know the answer, I still have them called Dr. Garamoni because that was something that I said I would do right from the beginning. I'm not taking medical responsibility for someone. However, I can right. certainly make the recovery process much, much stressful and uh, easier for someone. Well, definitely, it's good to know that there is someone with medical knowledge there, and uh, sure. if something were to go wrong, you know, the steps to take and to um, help them go to Well, the sure, place. that usually alleviates most of the problems before they even start. Yeah. Well, thank I'm you sorry. so much for being part of our show. We actually would love to have you on the TV show and um, show some of the videos you were talking about and so that people could actually see you the wife and maybe even videos of the facility and help you get out there more. Uh, our shows sure. reach internationally and it's uh, I believe that once people know that there's a place like this you'll definitely be getting a lot more business. Good, good. I would appreciate that. We really appreciate any help that we can, although actually right now for May, June, and July we're we're booked. Uh, awesome. Pretty, you know, not solid but we have a few openings left but we're we're coming along pretty good. So I think people know that we're listening and trying to make any changes that we can for anything. that any, People really haven't been unhappy, but, uh, you know, there's always there's always room for improvement. Let me stop you for a quick second. We'll get right back because we have three minutes of live, then we go into the recording portion. We want to make an announcement before the actually live uh, programming ends, and it continues on recorded. So hold on tight, and we'll come back to you. We want to, you know, everybody always comes to us with all sorts of negative stuff about what they say about transgender individuals and they cry in the violin of life. But, hey, we wanted to bring a positive story here for you today, and we're going to talk about the UFC. Well, there's this guy named Matt Machoni who made an offensive comment in Holy, who's unholy, unacceptable. Matt Machoni was suspended indefinitely by the UFC on Monday, hours after the heavyweight fighter and former NFL Defensive lineman called transgender MMA competitor Fallon Fox a lying, sick, sociopathic, disgusting freak in an interview. The UFC was appalled by the transphobic comments made by the heavyweight Matt Matroni. Today, in an interview on the MMA Hour, the UFC said in a statement Monday evening, the organization finds Mr. Matroni's comments offensive and wholly unacceptable, and as a direct result of the significant breach of the UFC's code of conduct, Mr. Matroni's UFC con- contract has been suspended and the incident is being investigated. It ended up being a nightmare for him. UFC President Dana White said on the UFC on Fox 7 conference called on Tuesday, what was the point of that interview? There was no point in it. Now it's caused him a bunch of headaches and problems. It's caused us a bunch of headaches and problems for no reason whatsoever. There was, there was no offset. Fallon Fox responded to Matroni's comments on her Facebook page Tuesday. Matt Matroni went well beyond disagreeing with the medical experts who say I should be able to compete as a woman and personally attack me as a man and as a human being. His comments do not reflect the spirit of our sport where most, com- where most competitors uphold values like respect and dignity. The UFC announced in January it had drafted a fighter code of conduct which covered criminal and other behavior that could harm the reputation of the MMA body. The UFC is a friend and an ally of the LGBT community and expects and requires all 450 of its athletes to treat others with dignity and respect. So we want to say shout out to UFC and thank you for supporting the trans community. You see people, there are individuals out there and organizations that do support it. And it's good to see that they are supporting and backing and having a zero tolerance for BS like this guy. Exactly. And good for you, Valen Fox, for fighting. Absolutely. And for being such a great athlete. All right. We're back to you, my friend. Hey, Leland. Hello. Thanks for uh, holding on there for a minute. Oh, sure. Yeah. The show is 30 minutes live, and uh, although it goes on for an additional 15 minutes recorded, if we needed to, but the live listeners lose completely the uh, the actual broadcast. So uh-huh. we'd like to make those important announcements. And the recorded, the, the sure. end up on demand. Yeah, and then uh, on demand, they get to listen to the whole show completely. So. Absolutely. Okay. okay. 
Uh, so I, anything else you wanted to add or say? Or No, I think that's pretty good. I need to get with you now that the last weekend was my event, you know, so I was like everywhere, and I just reeled it in. Like we just got back from doing a contract and stuff in order to run here uh, today because I wanted to get on the show. But um, I also want to get you, you know, square up with you on the sponsorship, whatever else. I, I know there was other things I'm supposed to be taking care of, but I haven't done it yet. Okay. I appreciate it, and would love to have you as a sponsor because we believe exactly what you're doing. It's an awesome thing. I would like to promote those individuals that are helping the community. You definitely sure. are, and more people need to hear about what you're doing. And so, sure, sure, yeah. Well, um, so we'll figure that out, and I'll make a payment to you, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll go look at the stuff now. I really honestly only looked at the bare minimum to get this done today because, uh, like I said, I didn't even get home from the event till like, Monday night really late, and then – I've been working all week, so I'll, I'll get in there and start looking at what I need to do. All right, not a problem. And we'll also give you a call here. Yeah, we definitely have to uh, go visit you and check out the retreat. I hear you have a furry friend back there. We try to keep ours quiet, and then it was like, okay, his dog started barking. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, have, we have two Yorkies here. They're called therapy dogs. To some, it's a, yeah. they're they're really good. So the the guys yeah. usually really like it, especially the single guys. Yeah, so definitely yeah. pets are. Very therapeutic. I, and we just had our baby. She's a big chihuahua. She, she, she makes she, she, men. Yes. Oh. They think she's a Doberman Pinscher in large. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, yeah. I know that feeling. Okay. So just get in touch with me, and we'll figure out what I need to do. I'll give you some money for sponsorship, and we'll go from there. All right. Take care, and I will send you the link uh, to the show so you can listen to it live. All right, everybody. Thank okay, you for thanks. tuning in again. Thank you okay. for tuning in again. Another great show. Happy birthday, Jessica. My love. Thank you. And get to enjoy many, many more. Yes. And our little baby. And uh, life is good. Couldn't ask for anything more. Well, for all of us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, we love you. But remember to always love yourselves, too. Good night. And be well.